and his people. Yad'una, so their lifestyle, their way of living, their way of thinking, their way of denial and rejection of the faith, it became a way from many people. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala saying, it's like they become imams. Imams, they call for the fire, وَيَوْمَ الْقِيَامَةِ لَا يُنصَرُونَ And no one can help them in the day of judgment. Surah Al-Qasas, Ayah 41. الدَّعْوَةُ إِلَى الْحَقِّ Example of the da'wah إِلَى الْحَقِّ وَمَنْ أَحْسَنُ قَوْلًا مِمَّنْ دَعَى إِلَى اللَّهِ وَعَمِلَ صَالِحًا وَقَالَ إِنَّنِي مِنَ الْمُسْلِمِينَ Who can be better than the one who called to Allah? The best of the speech, the best of the speech ever uttered, ever spoken, is the one who called to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. وَمَنْ أَحْسَنُ قَوْلًا مِمَّنْ دَعَى إِلَى اللَّهِ وَعَمِلَ صَالِحًا And he will do acts on righteousness. وَقَالَ إِنَّنِي مِنَ الْمُسْلِمِينَ And he says, I'm indeed a Muslim. Imam Hassan al-Basri uh, commenting uh, on this ayah said this is the cream of the humankind the highest level the highest rank of humankind he said all his words is called to Allah that he fulfilled with his own action because your words becomes attractive to people when they see you and you acting upon it. When they see the beauty of your words into action. When you ask for people to help and they see you the first who's helping and acting and you came before everyone when we inciting to people to be on time and when everyone comes they find you already on there. وَمَنْ أَحْسَنُ قَوْلًا مِمَّنْ دَعَى إِلَى اللَّهِ وَعَمِلَ صَالِحًا so the amal comes of his own saying. What he's saying, to call to Allah and call to Allah, call to what Allah commanded us to do and call to be in peace with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And then he will say his identity. He's a Muslim. Then people, they understand that Islam is the rightest action and the beautiful speech. But now people, when they say these are the Muslim, and they say the bad words and the wrong action, that's how they look at Islam. وَقَالَ إِنَّنِي مِنَ الْمُسْلِمِينَ وَفِي قَوْلِهِ سُبْحَانَ وَتَعَالَ وَلْتَكُمْ مِنْكُمْ أُمَّةٌ يَدْعُونَ إِلَى الْخَيْرِ وَيَأْمُرُونَ بِالْمَعْرُوفِ وَيَنْهَوْنَ عَنِ الْمُنْكَرِ وَأُولَئِكَ هُمُ الْمُفْلِحُونَ and also the ayah that we mentioned, وَمَنْ أَحْسَنُ قَوْلًا in Surah Fussilat, ayah number 33, and this ayah in Surah Ali Imran, ayah 104. And let it be, or let be from among you a group that they call to the good, and they enjoy good, and they forbid evil, and those are the successful. And the one who who acting on the way of the da'wah, calling people, his name is Da'iyah. Da'iyah. In al-istilah, when it comes to the to the Sharia, the meaning of da'wah is to qalabun nasi, ask people, call people to Islam, and convey the Sharia of Islam to the whole mankind. And it will be inside them to come to the way of Allah, teach them the way of Allah, uh, the belief and the ahkam and the moral according to the authentic way of the Sunnah of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam and the way it will be uh, easy for them. 
in when we say easy for them, it depends on everyone's way. Depends on everyone because uh, al madruin those you call, they are in different variety, different category. There's the hypocrite, there's the sinner, there's the, the disbeliever, there's the one who following totally different uh, faith. I mean, when I say disbeliever, he rejects the way of Islam, he, you know, and he's fighting Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. There's the ignorant. So there's a lot of, of types of madruin. And this type of madruin, you build the strategy of the da'wah according to this person, according to to the to the middle. And when we talk da'wah in general, we say we know that we are talking calling to the da'wah to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, to the deen of Islam. Uh, and the da'wah it is all of that without you know specifying how to do it uh, or the uh, let's say the way to do the dawah that's that's there's no really uh, have uh, like a specificity in the way of the dawah but what we call the dawah is to we call to allah subhanahu wa ta'ala but for those ways inshallah we'll come to 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 analyze them and to study them together with the so this is in the meaning of the dawah what is the hukm of the dawah It is an obligation. We're going to see a number uh, hundred ten. Ayah number 104 from Surah Ali Imran and Ayah number 110 Surah Ali Imran also and Ayah number 108 Surah Yusuf. Usually we have them on the screen. <coughs> the first Ayah uh, we already said it was to minkum ummatun yad'una ila al-khayri wa ya'muruna bil-ma'ruf wa yanhawna 'anil munkar wa ulaika hum al-muflihun and let that be arising from you a nation inviting uh, to all that is good enjoining what is right and forbidding what is wrong and those will be the successful Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said here wal takun let uh, there be arising from you now, when we say here, he said, the arising from you a nation inviting to Islam. Let there arise out of you a band of people inviting to all that is good. Here, the hukum of da'wah will say it is an obligation of every believer or it is an obligation on some of the believers. According to the ayah here, let's be, be among you, the, the definition or the translation will say among you or out of you, we say this is fardu uh, is a collective obligation, is a collective obligation, which is mean that uh, if there's a group from the ummah who are fulfilling this mission or this task of the da'wah, then it will become uh, non-obligatory on the rest. This is a collective obligation. But the reality, it's not really a collective obligation. It's an individual obligation. It's an obligation on everyone, but with the details that, uh, that follow, inshallah. Because, قَالَ وَلْتَكُنْ مِنْكُمْ مِنْكُمْ مِنْ Let be مِنْ is not, might be not among min lit-tab'id. Because in the Arabic language, min can serve two or more than, than a meaning. 
the world that we live, the feel, we touch, we sense, and the love that we, uh, the, the world that we don't see, and the dimension that we don't see. And the dimension that we don't see is a lot greater than the dimension that we see and we live in. And this is how it starts for the believer to look at it from these two perspectives. In the dimension that he sees, he will implement the law of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and he put all his effort to build, to act, and acting of course according to us, according to, to, the, to the way of Allah, act in a way uh, according to the way of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And the dimension of the unseen is, is to submit to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in a way in what is being revealed to us. That's why uh, the believers, we, we analyze the unseen. We talk about unseen in the in hudud al nas in the limit of what being revealed to us. We don't uh, uh, try to, uh, you know, to extend uh, any uh, type of analysis if we don't have text. So the eye of the unseen for the believer is the revelation of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Is the eye, our eye to the unseen is the wahi. Our eye to the unseen is the wahi. Uh, this is how someone will look at it. So, in this eye of the unseen, which is the revelation, we know we have like rules and fundamental and principle in our life. One of the greater principle that uh, death is not the end of the road, death is a step in the road. Death is not an end in the road, death is a step in the road. Which give us the definition of our life because the unseen how we look at it and we believe in it, it defines the way how we live in this life. It defines the way how we live in this life. If we look at the existence around us and how believer look, uh, you know, uh, conceive it, and all of course from the from the way of Allah Subhanahu wa Taala. First, in the in existence around us, there is no such thing called coincidence. There is no coincidence. And all this is the vision, Islamic vision, the vision of our aqidah in how to deal and define the world around us, which is help us, of course, to build our action and to build our vision and perspectives and objectives. In this life, in this existence, there's nothing or there's uh, no such a thing called coincidence. لا مكان للمصادفة في هذا الوجود. لا مجال للمصادفة. And what we have it, you know, the way how we say, لا حول ولا قوة إلا بالله. Which is mean there is no coincidence. Everything is by the will of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. The same, in the same way, uh, this universe is not, you know, um, functioning, you know, by by its own self, and the law subhanahu wa taala let it to be submitted to only to the law of physics or the law of the call of the nature. We believe that this universe he is functioning according to a law that the law subhanahu laws that the law subhanahu wa taala set. That's what we people they call law of physics, etc. But behind these laws that people, many people, they submit to these laws to be like the definitive and the way, the, the end of the knowledge is these laws. We believe that behind these laws there is what we call iradatun mudabbira. There is irada mudabbira. There is a will. There is the one who managing everything behind it is Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Therefore, we don't, you know, uh, when we build in our life, we build based on the laws that Allah set for the universe. But our aqidah is not limited to that. We do not submit when we come to the limit our effort to the nature of the thing we call Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to help and we never lose hope. Why? Because Allah, He's the one who set these laws. 
is not the laws who are controlling Allah. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala set <coughs> the faculty or the, the power of burning in the fire, not for the fire to control the burning. Is Allah who is always controlling these laws into the fire. And we know, the, all of us, the story of Ibrahim alayhi salam. If Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala didn't have this power after setting the law of burning in the fire, he would not, could not have come to help Ibrahim alayhi salam, nor Musa alayhi salam. So, al qudratu uh, this power that managing with an absolute will behind all the law that you see is that's that's what we believe in so is an extension to to the to what we have to do as efforts so look this is the balance for the Muslim this is and this is important in the field of the Tao as we want to see the effort that someone need to do, he put all what he can do. He put all his effort to build, to act. But at the limit of his action, he knows there's more which is the help of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. The impossible for the, for the believer with Allah is possible, with the tawakkul is possible. But he doesn't put his trust on the impossible. He put his trust in Allah. Because the impossible is possible with the power of Allah. But it doesn't mean that I plan on the impossible. Because the impossible I believe is possible. If someone is going to be tomorrow thrown in the fire, he will not gonna have his trust that this fire is going to be cool and peace. He had the belief that Allah can make it be cool and peace, but maybe not for him. It wasn't for Ashab al and it was for Ibrahim alayhi salam. So, the believer, he has a very uh, determined belief in a way that he built according to, to what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala uh, create a structure around us. But he sub doesn't submit to the structure. He submit to Allah. And any time when everything is locked, when everything is closed, he always has. He always has the trust in Allah, the hope in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. As Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said it, والله غالب على أمره ولكن أكثر الناس لا يعلم الله is always غالب على أمره he's he always over or come to fulfill his plans سبحانه وتعالى and Allah said it in a situation uh, of weakness of weakness in the story which in the situation of Yusuf عليه السلام after being picked by the caravan and sold in Egypt. After being picked by the caravan and sold, and when he's being sold, like in a very, you know, let's say in, in a situation of weakness, right? Because he's young, he doesn't have uh, the power, if you can say, to help himself. And he's being sold as a servant. And at that very moment, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said, this is how we empower our servant on earth. He didn't have any power. But the one who going to ask a question, Allah answered him in the, in the spot, said, وَقَالَ وَاللَّهُ غَالِبٌ عَلَىٰ أَمْرِهِ Allah is going to fulfill his plan, subhanahu wa ta'ala. We turn off the TV set.
So this is the perception of the of the universe according to the Islamic belief. Then the third part, I mean, we said the first way, how we look at it from Alim al ghaybi wa shahada seen and unseen. And then the functioning of the universe is in the hand of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. There's no such thing called a coincidence. Then we look into this definition, how Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, or our belief defined for us, uh, the vision toward the, the creation around us. We look at the human being. The human being is being treated in the Islamic belief as the human that we know. What it mean we know? With his sensitivity, weakness, he's very vulnerable and uh, limited. All of that, this, this reality of the human being that we know. When Islam talks to us, it doesn't ask from the from the mukallaf, from the believer, as someone who is a superhero, or someone who, someone who is capable to produce miracle, is Allah Subhanahu wa Taala talking to the human being that He created and considering everything that we know in us, sensitivity, the feeling. All those weakness is included in our Sharia. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala when he speaks says in the Quran, Wallahu yuridu ayyatuba alaykum yuridu ladina yitabi'una shahawati and tamilu maylan adima. Yuridu Allahu ayyatuba alaykum wa khuliqa al insan waif. Allah wants to shower you with his repentance. But those who are following the deviated way they want to to lead you astray. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala wants to repent on you because he already know that man was created weak. And weakness in man is not weakness. Weakness in man is in nature. As Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala created everything around us to help us fulfill our mission. To help us fulfill our mission considering the situation that we have or the structure that we created in. So, this is very important because uh, in the field of the da'wah, you cannot ask someone more than he can bear. You cannot ask someone, for example, who was addicted to certain things all his life for, you know, in one night he wants him to uh, pray, you know, the five prayers all together in t on time and, uh, you know, reciting in a very beautiful way the Fatiha, etc. You cannot. This is, you have to consider that nature of weakness, that nature of, you know, uh, taking someone step by step to help him come to the way of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So, weakness of a human being is in nature. Therefore, you need to take it as consideration as Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala took it in our consideration. لا يكلف الله نفسا إلا وسعا لا يكلف الله نفسا إلا ما أتا Allah will not charge someone more than he can bear and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will not ask for someone to do a task more than what he has. Allah will not ask you to give a sadaqah of a hundred dollar when you don't have even hundred dollar. ما أتاها and someone you want to help someone, you help him in the way that you can, etc. This is the human being as described in Sharia ah and taken in consideration in Sharia. Ah. Like, for example, when you look at other faith, when they take things like the celibacy for the youth, for the man in some, for example, or in the Catholic Church, things this goes against the nature of people. Or there is a lot of things in different faiths that consider the human being to be, uh, you know, uh, to be something like they ignore part of his structure, of his feeling, uh, of his, uh, you know, thinking, of his integrity. Why? Because this faith is not coming from the one who created them. Uh, 
one of the most sensitive thing and it is so powerful in the way of the Sharia. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala considered something that no one else, of course, except the way of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to integrate in such, uh, in such way of da'wah, in such following a way uh, or following a leader. The Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala showered him with such a mercy for everyone around him to love more than they love themselves. Ask a question, if the Prophet sallallahu didn't have this kindness, he will have the knowledge, he will have the, the greatness to lead, he will have, you know, all this great, you know, element of taqwa and piety, but he didn't have the kindness. Many people, they cannot be around him. And this is what Allah said. Not... If it wasn't with the, with the rahma of Allah, mercy to Allah, of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, so everyone will accept you, loves you. But if he was someone who's tough, and he has like hard heart, and he's like someone rough on people, they will have like a gun from around you. SubhanAllah, the question here that been asked is like Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala giving them an excuse to not be with the Prophet if he was someone harsh. They will have gone. They will have let you, they cannot even be close to you, Ya Rasulullah. Sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. And here, look, the Sharia took in consideration the sensitivity of the feeling of the people to be part of the message of Allah. So the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam as being himself rahmah, mercy, to fulfill the message of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So one, for example, you find someone, he had the knowledge, he has the, uh, you know, uh, the leadership, he has, uh, you know, all the, let's say, the element that make him to be a leader, for example, and someone to be followed. But if he doesn't have the rahmah, he's really conflicting and opposing and making the da'wah itself, you know, to be handicapped. Why? Because there is no rah. So rigidity in the deen, rigidity in the deen, it's not from the deen at all. And if rigidity, when you find it in the deen, and you find it in the action of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, that is, its essence is mercy. Its essence is mercy. Go and check it and study it. You say that how mercy really need to be implemented in that particular particular situation. This is how Islam looks at the human being. The human being look at them as is. When someone comes to Islam or Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala talk to us, he doesn't talk to us as the angels. We have capability, you know, like the angels? No. He doesn't talk to us without considering our feeling, our, you know, sensitivity, our weakness. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala takes in consideration all of that. And the whole sharia being revealed in this way. Therefore, if you're going to be carrier and to bear the sharia and to share it and invite for it we need to have the same structure the same thinking the same and we will have following the same element and aspect of the sharia the next point in this one is in the islamic vision of life is a sharia the highest you know priority toward human being is karamatul insan, the dignity of human being. The dignity of human being. 
ولقد فضلنا ولقد كرمنا بني آدم كرمنا we have honored them the son of Adam all of them ولقد كرمنا بني آدم وحملناهم في البر والبحر ورزقناهم من الطيبات وفضلناهم على كثير ممن خلقنا تقديرا we have honored the son of Adam and we carry them on the land or on the sea. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala subjected the animals for the man to ride and the sea for the man to, to, uh, to travel in it. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala provide for, the, for us all these all this fruits and all this vegetation. etc. So, karamatul uh, insan, the dignity of the human being is a priority in the sharia. And the Sharia, one of its purpose is to preserve the dignity of human being. To preserve the dignity of the human being. And you see, if you see the highest priority in the, what we call the, when you, we go to the Maqasid Sharia and we look into uh, the facts that are uh, you know what we call الضروريات, the necessities in the Sharia you find them all is to protect the human being and his dignity the protection of belief the protection of life the protection of property the protection of the intellect and the protection of progeny all of it is to keep the dignity of the human being and to to keep him you know and to, to respect, because without, for example, respecting and, and striving to keep those things, this necessity existing in a society, someone will lose. I mean, every human being loses his dignity, and he will lose, you know, uh, he's really, he cannot live among people who do not respect his belief, who do not respect his life, which is mean everyone wants to kill each other. Everyone wants to steal each other. Everyone wants to, you know, uh, to negate the way you think, etc., etc. So those are from Abdaruriyat al Khams, and we find one of the highest priority in the Sharia is to karamat al insan and uh, to give the dignity. And the dignity of the of the human being, as we believe, is only granted within the Islamic Sharia because, uh, Subhanallah. Uh, someone can can live uh, with respect and dignity in this life but for the believer the greatest dignity and respect he, he would like I mean he is striving to have in the akhirah look the people of understanding and this is when we said we have the two perspectives hayat dunya wal akhirah alim al ghaybi wa shahada uh, الذين يتفكرون في خلق السماوات والأرض يذكرون الله قياما وقعودا ويتفكرون في خلق السماوات والأرض Those that are reflecting in the creation and the heaven and the earth and remembering Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in all their position After that what they said They seek with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala the refuge from the hellfire because they realize when they look at the creation that the ultimate truth is to live in bliss for eternity. And the only thing that will not allow you to do this or to be in this great happiness is for someone to fall into the wrath of Allah and then be cast in the doom of hell. Then he said, قَالُوا رَبَّنَا مَا خَلَقْتَ هَذَا ذَاتِنَا سُبْحَانَكَ فَقِنَا عَذَابَ النَّارِ Oh Allah, you didn't create this for nothing, for pain. Be exalted to you, Ya Allah. Oh Allah, shield us from the doom of hell. Then what did they say? What did they say? They said, Oh Allah, whomever you cast in hell fire, فَقَدْ أَخْزَيْدَ You disgraced him. So the real disgrace is to be held in hellfire. So when we call karamatul insan, the respect and the dignity of the human being only can be fulfilled by the Imam and the Imam in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Only. 
because that's what will give him the purpose, the real purpose of life to live for it. Therefore, all his motivation and goals in life are, subhanAllah, taken and make him travel to the ultimate great dignity and honor to be with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and not be disgraced. إِنَّكَ مَنْ تُدْخِلِ النَّارَ فَقَدْ أَخْزَيْتَهُ وَمَا مِنْ ظَالِمِينَ وَالْأَنصَارِ In summary of this Islamic, I mean the Islamic vision of life, and before we come to the summary, we'll see the last point here. The dignity of the human being, we said, is associated to his Iman. There is no dignity without the faith in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Because the ultimate dignity and the ultimate success only happen in the in the hereafter. Therefore, the human being who is the believer in this case, he going to link his ties based on the Iman, based on the Iman, based on the faith. So his tie and his kinship will be based on the belief. And he will, subhanAllah, look at everyone right in the universe, past, present, and future, he's part of his family. So, the big family, it is a salihun <clears throat> And this is what we call every day in Surah Al-Fatiha. Oh Allah, bestow on us your gift, and you shower us with your gift. And he said, look, اِهْدِنَا الصِّرَاطَ mustaqim Guide us to, to the right path. صِرَاطَ الَّذِينَ أَنْعَمْتَ عَلَيْهِمْ The path of those you have showered with your gift. So Allah showered us with your ni'am. Taib, who are these people who get the ni'am? It's your family. It's the family of the believers. Because Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said, وَمَن يُطِعِ اللَّهَ وَرَسُولَهُ فَأُولَئِكَ مَعَ الَّذِينَ أَنْعَمَ اللَّهُ عَلَيْهِ Whoever who obey Allah and His Messenger, those they will be with those that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala showered them with His blessing. This is what we ask in Surah Al-Fatiha. Sirat al-Ladina al-Amd alayhi. So these are people, are your family. Who are these people? Al-Nabiyuna, al-Siddiquna, al-Shuhada, wa al-Salihu. These four categories. In the Salah, you say, As-Salamu alayka ayyuha al-Nabiyu, wa rahmatullah. And then you say, As-Salamu alayna wa ala ibadi Allah al-Salihin. You're greeting every righteous servant in the whole universe. All the angels, by your salam, receive your salam, your salam when you do it in tashahat. And this is, you know, the perspective, the deep perspective when you look, every servant, righteous, in this universe is your family. So when you look back, when you read the Qur'an, subhanAllah, you will be attached to every writing that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said. The people of the Ruhdu, they are your family. The people they were with Ibrahim, they are your family. The people they were with the believers, with the Musa alayhi salam, the same. All of them. All of them. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, He has like... Uh, let's call it like a realm of dimension, what we call a salihun Sulaiman alayhi salam, in his dua, qala wa alhiqni bi salihin Allah, join me to your realm of salihin Yusuf alayhi salam, the same thing. Walutan ataynahu hukman wa ilman. Wa adkhannahu fi ibadina salihin And we enter him in in this servitude, in this big dimension that Allah reserved for us, Salihun. Wa Ismaila wa Idrisa, they're kifli kullum min as-sabirin, wa adkhannahum, na as-salihin, wa as-salihin. So it's like a salih, in the dimension that someone he's striving to be in. Ya ayyatu al-nafsu al-muthma'inna, irji'i ila rabbiki rabiyatan mardiyin. Fadkhuli fi ibadi. عبادي أرسالهم. 
then the conclusion is لا صلاح ولا طمأنينة ولا حياة إلا بالرجوع إلى الله سبحانه وتعالى. There is no way to build correct to find peace and comfort, comfort and tranquility, and the taste to taste the joyful taste of life only by going back to Allah سبحانه وتعالى. And if we have this. As a principle in our life, then the best thing you will do in your life is da'wah. Because Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, as we want to explain the meaning of the da'wah, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala reserved for the best of His creation, who are the His prophets. Again, لا صلاحة, no correction. No, no way of, of spreading, you know, the good, if you can say. Bring things to change to the good. No peace, no tranquility, and no joyful taste of life only by going back to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And Allah made it the principle. قَالَ أَلَّذِينَ آمَنُوا وَتَطْمَئِنُّ قُلُوبٌ بِذِكْرِ اللَّهِ أَلَا بِذِكْرِ اللَّهِ تَطْمَئِنُّ الْقُلُوبِ أَلَا بِذِكْرِ اللَّهِ تَطْمَئِنُّ الْقُلُوبِ Those who believe and their uh, heart find rest with the remembrance of Allah, it's not with the remembrance of Allah that the heart find the rest. When we talk about the da'wah, so this is the principle that we start from to have this vision, the Islamic vision of life. Al-Dawah to the Lugha Mushtaqa min al-Fi'li Da'a. Al-Dawah, Al-Dawah is uh, in, the, in the language is extracted from the verb Da'a. Wa Da'a talabu shay'i, you ask for something, you call for something. And call, a call can be either for the truth or for the falsehood. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gathered these two calling for the good and for the bad in one ayah in Surah Al-Baqarah. Qala ula'ika yad'una ila nar Those, they are calling to, to the fire. Wallahu yad'u ila al-jannati wal-maghfirati bi-idnih. And Allah is calling for paradise and to forgiveness by His will, subhanahu wa ta'ala. Surah Al-Baqarah, ayah number 221. And in many places, the word of da'wah mentioned, uh, it mentioned also, inna uh, shaytana lakum aduwun fattakhiduhu aduwa, the shaytan is for you, is an enemy, so take him as enemy. إنما يدعو حزبه ليكون من أصحاب السعير. He's calling his party to be from from the people who are the Allah of Hellfire. And this is Surah Fatir, ayah number six. وقال سبحانه وجعلناهم أئمة يدعون إلى النار ويوم القيامة لا ينصرون. So this is the da'wah for the for the falsehood and for the for the doom of fire. We make them leaders, we make them imams, and this is Fir'aun. As Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, anadiru dhalika fi surah al-hajj, qala fajatanibu al-rijisa min al Be away from the impurity min al of idols. So, min al awthan doesn't say be away from the impurity of some of the idols. That will not be right because all the uh, all the idols they have this spiritual impurity. So, min al awthan is like I say, be away from the impurity of the idols. Min, like you know, to specify and to point the awthan to confirm, to make it like min, to add it 
to come to the surface to be like something very like in the face of someone you cannot even miss it when you, if you apply the same meaning here it be you know umma, not among you like my the umma. let's be the umma they call for the good which is mean everyone subhanallah is entitled to make that but when we understand the dawah we understand that we already we are in that okay because when you say let us come from whom they are drawn in the way we are moroona bil ma'roof we are known as monk it's not the purpose or the way of the believer is always to do good and to call for the good Allah, the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said, Al-Dinu Al-Nasiha. al The religion is the advice. If we can say Nasiha, because it has meaning different. Qawli liman ya Rasulullah. To make Nasiha. To whom? Nasiha is to give advice, but also to be sincere in giving the advice. Because nasiha is also sincerity. قالوا لمن يا رسول الله تهم يا رسول الله دي نصيحة قال لله ولي رسوله ولي أئمة المسلمين وعمتهم to Allah سبحان how can be advice to Allah so نصيحة هي اللي is not the advice نصيحة is to be sincere to Allah. So nasiha to Allah is al-ikhlas. To the Prophet ﷺ, in nasiha, in to be sincere in following the Prophet ﷺ. To the a'imma of al-Muslimin, the leader of Muslim, nasiha is to remind them Allah and the way of the Prophet ﷺ when they go away. When one of the khulafa it's been said Umar ibn al-Khattab and in the other way most likely to be Umar ibn Abdul Aziz when he was riding and they told him Ittaqillah someone told him fear Allah and he is the Khalifa he went off his his ride and went down to sujood he said Alhamdulillah that they still in the Ummah of Muhammad those who saying to their leader fear Allah when you have met him and to the, all the believers. When you say, you know, calling for good, asking someone, please do not do this, this is haram, etc. Et so it is the deen. And the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Whoever who will see an evil thing, he should, he has to change it. Men ra'a minkum, this is ala al-umum. Men ra'a, whoever who will see. If you're saying, La ilaha Allah, Muhammad Rasulullah, if you see evil things, you have to change it. Changing the evil is da'wah. So, we give them the evidence that da'wah is an obligation of every believer. Why? Because da'wah is not distant, it's not dissociated from the belief. It is part of your belief, part of your action, part of your personality, part of your identity. So they say this one he's a da'i and this one is a believer. The believer is a da'i. Tayyib, inshallah, we'll stop here. And I thought the prayer is at 3. Uh, the class ends at 3.30, right? Tayyib, we'll go pray and come back. Uh, I, thought, uh, I thought the class ends at 3. Tayyib, inshallah, we'll stop here, we'll pray and we'll come back.
Tawshaq Nasihat to Amir al Mu'minin is to advise him. Yes, advise him. Amr to Nas, also advise him. The advice is a da'wah. But uh, some people take that uh, hadith as to actually, um, they say that uh, there should be allegiance to the leaders. There is what? Allegiance to the leaders and follow them no matter what they do. So. That's against uh, Allah's way. Whatever they do, I mean, they become like sacred because they are leaders. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said, one element, one criteria to be like, you know, to prefer one to another is piety, taqwa, righteousness. And even apply for the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. So uh, they say that people who revolt, you know, should be, the capital punishment should be implemented. <sighs> Let them say what they say. <laughs> is what they say is the Qur'an. It's a conflict with Allah's laws. Who, oh, the, the one who says like that? Yeah. Yeah, of course. No. <coughs> we call like... Okay. <laughs> We said the hadith of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Whoever will see munkar, he should change it. So there is no holiness in Islam. If someone is doing munkar, he is a munkar. It's a munkar. We cannot define a munkar because it's done by someone who is weak and someone whose status is like uh, low status in the society, that is monker. But when it's done by someone who has very high status in the society, that becomes a good deed. <laughs> I mean, they uh, check his status before they write in the record. They say, hold on, hold on, he's a king, you should not write this. king, you should not write this. Alhamdulillah Rabbil Alameen Alhamdulillah Ala Aziz Islam Man ra'a minkum munkaran fal yugayir Whoever will see among you an evil he should change it Qala fa bi yadihi aw bi lisanihi Qala fa bi yadihi fa illam yastata fa bi lisanihi Fa illam yastata fi bi qalbi wa dhalika adhafu al-iman He should change it with his hand if he cannot with his tongue if he cannot with his heart and that's the weakest of the iman and the weakest of the iman not weakness in level or weakness as as iman in the heart but the weakness is the lowest level of the iman if someone would not deny with the evil at least with his heart where the iman to be expressed then because one effect of the iman one of the other of the iman one of the existence of the iman that you love the good and you hate the bad so if you see evil done in front of the person, of the believer, and he doesn't feel anything, he doesn't have any reaction toward that evil, so the Iman is dead. For here, as we mentioned this hadith as an evidence for the Dawah, right? So if someone will see evil, want to change it. Changing the evil is inscribed in the way of the da'wah. They call and they enjoy good and they forbid evil. Now the scholars when they were uh, explaining this hadith, they said, uh, the changing with the hand should be for the, for the rulers or for the system of the government. Uh, with the tongue, they should be for the scholars, for the scholars. But this is as categorized to see like who should do that. Not only those, so it's not limited for those, but who should do it. Who will have in a Muslim society the, let's say, the right to use the hand to stop the evil is the, is the government. The Islamic would be the Islamic government. 
But someone, he will do it. I mean, if he can, with the limit, uh, you know, with uh, respecting all the rights and be, you know, fulfilling the, the respect of all the law of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Uh, someone will do it with, with the hand, like, with his, he can do it with his own friend, by shaking him, we should not do this. Someone will do it with his kid. That's why we'll come to the next hadith, which is, قَالَ كُلُّكُمْ مَرَاعٍ وَكُلُّ مَسْؤُولٌ عَنْ رَعِيَتِهِ Everyone is like a shepherd. Everyone is like a responsible. And look the hadith of the Prophet ﷺ, the term that he, he used. Shepherd is like you mean he have this connection of rahmah toward that you are responsible. So that rahmah, if you go to someone to to hit or to use his hand on that, per, on that, for example, kid or child, is out of love, not out of hatred. You see? So he changed the evil. And everyone is responsible. And everyone is accountable on the responsibility that he has. The man is responsible on his uh, family. The woman is responsible on her household, etc. The person, other person on his business. So we find everyone has a responsibility. And that taking care of responsibility, that is the meaning of the Tao. That is part of the Tao. Now, loving to share the good, love to share the good. Here when it comes, subhanAllah, the ummah that it comes to the back to the, uh, to the end. Let's arise among you a group that they call for Allah. So it's like these groups are the experts. If someone, for example, we have it in the society, uh, people at work, they talk to them about Islam. But they can, when they ask them a question, many people, they don't have the answer. They say, we'll bring you, we'll take you to someone. This is the email, this is the phone. You can call someone, he can answer your question. So those who are entitled to have the answer of the question, those who devoted their time to learn to be expert, if you can say, or their speciality in the Dao. This will be the group who will be helping all the other da'ya, every believer is a da'ya. So someone, he will make the first action, but he come to his limit of this action. He will not stop there. He will try to take the action to the one who knows better than him to help. Or someone who is maybe close in proximity, like in a place, uh, in knowledge, uh, in field, for example, the gender, you know, someone, for example, if he happened to be asked by a person, like, for example, a sister, he say, you know, might be a sister who can help her better, so he will put her in connection with the sister, etc. So this is the way how the da'wah, so what they call menkum ummah, is to raise to do the good, is to raise to share the good. And you will not stop at the limit, at your own limit, but you try to extend it, to stretch it, or to spread it to those who can help in the field where you cannot help. And then, وَلْتَكُنْ مِنْكُمْ أُمَّا يَدْعُونَ إِلَى الْخَيْرِ Let be among you, it become among you, is like that circle of phrase that everyone is racing to get there. Why? Because Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala ended the ayah, and those are the successful. It's not every believer wants to be successful. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala show you the show to the success. And he says, Sabiqu wa sabiru ila maghfiratin min rabbikum wa jannah. Compete and hasten and raise for the forgiveness of Allah. So the forgiveness of Allah and the jannah is the success. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala give us different roads to get to there. One of the great roads is to enjoy good, forbid evil, to call for the good. And it is the nature of the believer to call for the good. Therefore, the da'wah, is a part of the action of the believer. It is, let's say, part of the element of the personality of the believer. And he will do it in the way that he can, with respect in the law of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, respecting the etiquette of the da'wah, which is the rahma, respecting the etiquette of the da'wah, which is the nasiha, the sincerity, and respecting the etiquette of the da'wah is to, to respect his limit, to know his limit, and to transfer to, if we can say, call for the help for those who know better or they are more convenient for that special case to, to help in the da'wah of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Uh, the next ayah is ayah 110 from the same surah Ali Imran. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said, 
قال كنتم خير أمة أخرجت للناس تأمرون بالمعروف وتنهون عن المنكر. And this is another evidence that everyone is entitled to uh, to do the da'wah. And the da'wah, as we said, uh, the da'wah, uh, as we give the explanation of the da'wah, we cannot limit the da'wah to the way of the da'wah, to a particular or specified way of the da'wah. For example, some people, they limit the da'wah to go to knock on the doors and call people to the masjid, for example. That is not the da'wah. We talk on the da'wah is to call to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So the da'wah it is very uh, open and wide understanding. It is a part of the personality of the believer. It is part of his own belief. Well, because some people sometimes when they feel, think of da'wah, you feel them like, you know, somehow, uh, you know, repairs from the da'wah. Why? Because of the understanding of the da'wah that they have. Which is mean, you have to go out, you have to do this. That is like, that's the da'wah. That's not the da'wah. Nothing you have to do. That's turq da'wah. That's asarib da'wah. That's the ways how to do da'wah. But the ways of the do da'wah varies from place to place, varies from time to time, varies from personality to personality. There's people that cannot, for example, go and knock on doors. He cannot. You know, people, you know, very shy, they cannot do that. But you find them very skilled in different things that they can make, you know, great achievement in the way of the Dawah in what they are skilled in. So if we limit the da'wah to this type of action or this type of way, that is, you know, really deforming and uh, and changing the meaning of the real da'wah, altering the way of the da'wah. In this ayah, kuntum khayra ummatin ukhrijat nas, you are the best nation produced as an example for mankind. In the other uh, translation, they say you are the best of the peoples. Uh, evolved for mankind. Kuntum khayra ummatin ukhrijat linnas. You are and kuntum doesn't mean like uh, indicating the past, but is a fact and a confirmation. It's like you were and you are the best of the nation. The best of the nation, not uh, for any type of status that someone has or for any, you know, roots or language or color, no about the action, about your own action. So you will be the best among the mankind because you took the lead to call the mankind to the right path. You took the lead to call them to the, to the way of Jannah, to the way of the pleasure of Allah, to the way of the success. So you run to say, it's like you are on a path, you say, from this way, the shaitan is calling and pushing people to get them to hell fire. And the day of Allah, he told them, no, this way, this way. I beg by Allah, that's the right way, come here. And, you know, imagine someone inviting from away, tell them this is the way. How we will invite them? You want to ask people, you know, the other way, they're going to be ruined. They're going to be like in do doomed. And you are on one way, and call them, please, this way. So if you really want that person to come to you, will you be rigid? Do, will you have a frowny face? You say, oh, this way. And then you don't want to look at him. You say, that's not Dawah, that right? And this is, subhanAllah, is part when we think of your position as a believer and ambassador of the deen of Allah, subhanahu. The Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, when he called his al-Aqrabin, uh, he said, he said, wa sabaha. Wa sabaha is the call warning the coming of an army. And he stood on a, on a, on a safa, uh, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. When they, all they gathered, they know that he's the trustworthy. And he's the truthful, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. He said, if I tell you that an army is coming now to attack you, will you believe me? He said, of course. So after he presented them for them, that to, to confer with them, 
is how trustworthy وسلم, and truthful and Amin وسلم, no one. then he gave them the message and they denied it so the caller he will be calling with sincerity and with like you know full heart that this is the way this is the way of success so what makes this Ummah to be the best of the Ummah taking the lead and not the lead to control the lead to call it's like uh, people are looking for water you find the way for the where the source of water is when you run and you come to the way that get to the source you took the lead but you took the lead to find the way and you'll be calling them from here from here so you let everyone pass to go because you want to be on that path calling for the one who missing or he's still looking for it that's the day so the lead is not to control or to have everybody under the lead is to call for the for the path so this great action will make you to the best of the ummah that you calling for the good you enjoying good and you forbid evil and we will study inshallah al-amru bil ma'ruf wa al-munkar is the heart of all good the heart of all good because it's not the question to get to provide the good the question how to preserve the good in your hand preserving the good it require an action of calling for the good and enjoying the good and reminding the good remind them remind them remind them today he came to the masjid tomorrow he will come after but after a week the feeling when he used to come to the masjid a week ago uh, it was a stronger you know he was thinking of the reward you thinking of uh, he's concentrated now within the week a lot of job getting busy so he became like there's that routine he's driving toward the masjid and he's like all his worry in his head he entered the masjid he joined the prayer he leave the prayer and still thinking of his problem so enjoying the good when he say you are coming to Allah Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is watching you Allah is showing you the dhikra subhanallah everything that you tell him he knows for example, if someone will, uh, we can do it by experience, we might do it, inshallah, during these uh, days, someone will stand after the prayer and say hadith, that everyone will know. Say, oh, your prayer is here, 27 daraja, then our prayer, and if whoever will do this, and the hadith will mention in Salat al-Fajr, if you pray and you make tasbih, the, the, the time that you're staying or sitting in your place, the angels are making salat on you. Saying, "Oh Allah, forgive him. Oh Allah, shower you, shower him with you, uh, with your mercy." What well, that tasbih after the salah, after being reminded with this hadith, will have totally different taste, because you feel, and that the angels around you making du'a for you, and that's the dhikr. So the enjoying the good is like to always remind yourself, remind the people around you. Why, subhanAllah, the heart of the Prophet Sallallahu he said like the iron, like the metal, get rusted, it's easy. And what is the way of to cleanse them? I mean, how to get rid of the rust is to cleanse them, to always keep them clean. That's the heart. The heart is with the reminder, remind, remind. So that's the enjoy of the good. The forbid of the evil it's like the disease, subhanAllah, who comes to take over to kill everything. So the reminder, enjoy good, enjoy good, to preserve the good in the hand, to preserve that, you know, joy, to preserve that, you know, presence of the spirit and that enthusiasm. And the forbid the evil is to keep the disease outside. So both enjoying and forbidden is an action that need to continue all the time. When someone, subhanAllah, will get heedless or neglectful, the shaitan never, never stops. He's always working, day and night. Day and night. So this is what makes the Ummah to be great. Because when you get to a place of good, 
the only way to help you to preserve that place is enjoying good and forbidding وَتُؤْمِنُونَ بِاللَّهِ and you believe in Allah now the most amazing thing that the belief came after enjoying good and forbid evil and the question is how can someone enjoy good and forbid evil if he doesn't have iman he says it's impossible so he had the iman he loves Allah he's following the messenger sallallahu alayhi wasallam, and that part of his personality as a believer to enjoy good and forbid evil so we say why تُؤْمِنُونَ then and you believe in Allah, it has different meaning here, sir. Because he said, Qal, you enjoy what is right and forbid what is wrong and believe in Allah. And believe in Allah comes to give us another understanding of the great benefit and impact of enjoying good, forbid evil, is also to protect your Iman and preserve your Iman. Because if you don't enjoy good and forbid evil, your Iman is decreasing, decreasing till it go away from from the heart of the person, from the heart of your neighbor, from your heart of your family, from the hearts of the community, and then um, Iman is gone. So it's like what minuna to preserve the Iman, to preserve the quality of the Iman, to preserve the values in the society, the life of it, the fuel of it is enjoy good and forbidding. What minuna billah is like the Iman billah. Its strength is keeping enjoying good and forbid evil, to keep the heart fresh and to keep the spirit fresh. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala then turned to, to talk about the people of the book. But this ayah, the most important and the greatness of the believer to be like the best of the nation is because of their action, which is Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala instructed them and he determined in enjoying good, forbid evil, which both action who help the Iman to be preserved. And when the Iman is preserved, then the life is preserved. The last ayah in uh, the Hukum of the Dawah, ayah number uh, 108 from uh, Surah 12, Surah Yusuf. قل هذه سبيلي أدعو إلى الله على بصيرة أنا ومن اتبعني وسبحان الله وما أنا من المشركين. Say this is my way. I invite to Allah with insight. I invite and to Allah on evidence clear as the seeing with one's eyes. This is على بصيرة. أنا ومن اتبعني I and those who follow me I and whoever follows me This is another evidence that everyone is a day Look, this is my way, the Prophet said قل, O Prophet of Allah This is my way The way of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala When you show the way it comes in different way how to say it. When you say to invite to it, you show the love for this way. You show the might and the pride that you have to be part of this way. Or, in the other hand, when someone has been, you know, attacked by argument and dispute and people, they want to doubt his way, you say, this is my way. You have your way, I have my way. This is my way. I hold on my way. You know, that's it. I will not accept any dispute or argument in this way. Now, what is the, the definition that the Prophet Sallallahu or in this ayah, this is my way. And at this is my way, the way is defined by I call to Allah. I call to Allah ala basira. I call to Allah ala basira. I invite to the way of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So my way is to invite to the way of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala on clear evidence. And the clear evidence comes back to the understanding of the wahi. Because the source of the way of Allah is the revelation. And the clear evidence 
which comes to say, to have that strength to say, I do not know when we do not know. That's the clear evidence. Because you don't want to lead people astray, you want them to lead them to the, to the good. هذه سبيلي أدعو إلى الله على بصيرة على بصيرة on very clear evidence everything is clear for me when I call to the belief of Allah I know I calling is so clear for me when I call to the Jannah of Allah I know it's so clear etc على بصيرة and everything someone will say has an evidence backed up by an evidence and this is the way of the believer in the way of the Dawah. He will not base his Dawah on Shawadun wa Gharaib. Shawad, thing is, our league Shawad is like, you know, things like unheard of. Uh, things are, you know, very strange. If you call to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, say, come to Islam, and, you know, uh, at the second day, Allah will shower you with a million dollars. Well, this is so shad. This is nothing have to do with Islam. I mean, of course, we know many different faiths, other faiths, they, they use this technique of money and dunya. So, you say, you want this person to come to Islam, and you love Islam. Don't use ignorance and think strength that is not from the path of Allah to call for. Allah ghani yunai. Allah is independent. And Allah is not in need of our worship. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, if He wants that person, He will. It depends on that person Himself, not on you. And this is, inshallah, we'll study it. Depends on that person. If He wants the truth, Allah make it easy for you. So don't use things that are not from the way of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam to bring people to Islam. And this is Basira, make things to be clear for everyone and to be on evidence. Wa subhanallah, and Allah be exalted for anyone to do such a thing. And before that he said, Qala ana wa man I will do that, I and whoever follows me. Subhanallah. So whoever follows me, everyone who is saying, Ashadu an la ilallah wa anna muhammadin rasulullah, he is a follower of the Prophet Sallallahu Therefore, he asked, call to Allah ala basira. And the basira required the knowledge. The basira required for someone to be a student of knowledge. Because that's one of the requirements of the path. Because asking the knowledge of the Sharia, part of it is an obligation. It's an obligation. Part of it is a collective obligation. When you go to you know, details, that's collective obligation. But when you go to the main deen, to understand the deen, and to have the basira on the deen, when people, they ask you, before they ask you, ask yourself, why the Qur'an, not another book? You have to feel it inside, because it is the Qur'an, not because I grew up reading the Qur'an. That someone doesn't have the true basira here. Why you want to be Muslim? Why? What joy you find it to be Muslim? Because your parents are Muslim? This is not Basira. This is not Basira. So when someone comes to the path, he comes on Basira, on clear evidence. He loves it. He enjoys it. And that's how he became become like true, like the Da'iya. It's not in the, uh, to be eloquent in speech. The da'ya, it's really to feel what you talk about. When you talk about Islam, they see it in your face. Some people, they don't even, you know, uh, focus on your words. They see it in your face. And how many people, they come to Islam because they saw it in the face of some, some people, other people. They saw it in the face. He say, yeah, we used to work with Muslim. The way they deal, the way they eat, you know, they think that is Islam, which is, you know, that joy brought to them from their own belief. But this is how they come to look and to search about Islam.
Subhanallah. Wa subhanallah wa ma ana min al-mushrikeen. Be Allah exalted and I'm not from those who join gods with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And here, just the last point, when we say wa ma ana min al-mushrikeen, is like the action to call to Allah without evidence, it might make someone to fall into shirk. To my fall into shirk. That's why the knowledge of the Sharia, ah, or to act based on someone he knows when he comes to his limit, I do not know. Transfer it or take it to someone who knows. Why? Because you want to fulfill things according to what pleases Allah and what pleases Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to do things right. Because if you enjoy good, you need to enjoy the real good. And if you forbid evil, you need to forbid the real evil. So to know the good, it requires knowledge. To know the evil, it requires knowledge. Many people, they say a lot of things are haram, and they're not. And many people, they say it's okay to do it, and they're not okay. All right? I mean, if you look in our societies, and uh, especially uh, what is addressed to the children and the youth, almost everything is haram. And it's not. So when they grow up on the forbidden side, subhanAllah, it's going to be easy prey for the shaitan. So that basira may fall, you know, contradict or conflict the way of Allah when someone is calling on with ignorance. Uh, if you have any questions, inshallah we will have uh, the, the plan, the whole syllabus sent to you, inshallah.